be going live in just a moment. Thank you. Four people needlessly lost their lives tonight from this savage suspect. A stabbing spree in Orange County. Four people dead, six different crime scenes. He just looked agitated and was in a bad mood. Police say the crimes were brutal and the work of just one man. Just pure hate this guy did this. We know that this guy was full of anger and he harmed a lot of people tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have some breaking news for you coming to us from one of our outside correspondents. Go ahead, Jim. We can tell you it's now been several hours since we first arrived here at this first crime scene, this apartment complex in Garden Grove. At the time, we kept hearing more sirens. At the time, we kept hearing more reports of stabbings and burglaries. We now know at the time, this crime spree was just beginning. Yes, yes. Orange County, the center of a man's violent and frightening stabbing spree. Four killed and two wounded. This woman just told us she thinks her husband is one of the victims. I am so shocked. I don't know what to say. I'm just exhausted. Investigators describing this as an anger-filled rampage. Robbery, hate, homicide, this, this is all... All the above. Just after 4 o'clock, police respond to a burglary and later a double stabbing at this apartment complex on Gentris Avenue in Garden Grove, where we just learned the suspect lives. Two men, one on the balcony, one inside, both killed. Police continue to respond to call after call at a bakery, a check cashing business, and an insurance agency where one man watched in horror a live security camera feed of the suspect attacking his employees. He's watching it through a live circuit TV and that he saw that his employee was down on the ground. In fact, she had been stabbed multiple times. The suspect screaming as he's arrested just before 6.30 tonight. Police telling us he dropped his knife and handgun when confronted by them outside the 7-Eleven. We understand the suspect followed the security guard inside the 7-Eleven, fighting him, then using his knife to cut his gun off the duty belt. Also, right next to the 7-Eleven, the suspect walked into the subway and killed a man. We believe he was an employee. Yes, yes. Guys, we have just found out that there are evil people in the world. I know it's shocking to you. It's shocking to us here at Kerry Trainer News. There are people in the world that don't think like you and me. Yes, yes. I'm telling them that now. They're just as shocked as I am. The other thing I'd like to bring to you is... People in my job, the media, don't give a shit about you. Oh, shoot, I don't know if I was supposed to say that on air. We actually are more concerned with selling ad space than providing you factual data. Why? Because we know if we connect with you on an emotional level, you'll feel that you're doing yourself a service by paying attention to the news, to the things that we share with you, to the things that we sensationalize. It is our job to continue to sell ad space because, hell, I've got a home in the Hamptons and I like skiing. I can't pay for that if we don't have ad space. I'm off it. News guy off, Mickey here. Look, I'm not making light of what we just saw happen. There are dangerous people in the world. That is a fact. I don't need a news anchor to tell me that and neither do you. There are dangerous people that use all kinds of implements, including their hands, to hurt people. This is not an update on how guns don't kill people. People kill people. We understand that. I will say, though, this pen, when I wrote notes, it didn't tell me what to write. I chose. You know what those notes are? Check this out, year to date in my city of Chicago, 1,379 people were shot so far this year. That's pretty intense. That's six people per day. It's actually 6.32 people per day. That's over 307 killed out of that 1,379. That's heavy, man. That's 307 families that lost somebody. That's 370 people that never got to finish their life. Maybe some of them were not good people, I don't know, but that's horrible. 1,379 lives changed because of violence. This last weekend alone in Chicago, seven people were killed just on that one weekend, 52 wounded. 52 people wounded in one weekend in Chicago. Look up the stats for what's going on in the Mideast right now. It ain't 52 Americans shot, I'll tell you that much. There was a five-year-old boy shot in his car as part of that violence. 
Sunday a.m. alone, early hours of the morning in a west side neighborhood, 17 people were shot. They say the area looked like a crime scene uh, out of a movie. Ambulances coming and going, uh, investigators, families grieving on the street, yellow tape strung everywhere, and there's a 51 second bit of audio uh, footage that's out on the internet if you want to look it up. It sounds like a war zone of people just shooting for almost a minute straight in that neighborhood. We don't have a problem here with mental health, no more than anywhere else in the world. We don't have a problem here with politics. We don't have a problem here with guns. We have a problem here with responsibility. Guys, there's this common thread now in our community. We hear this all the time. No one's coming to save you. Now, I have good friends that use that. But I don't like it because I have good friends that are coming to save you. I have good friends and students that are coming to save you and have dedicated their life to do it. The fact is though, we don't have enough people in this world that are always there to save you. As such, it is your responsibility to go through each day intent on saving yourself, right? It is uh, never owed to us to live in perfect safety and in fact, Life is a pretty dangerous thing, from walking across the street to hanging Christmas lights, to eating too much junk food, to smoking, to drinking, to going skiing, uh, like our news anchor likes to do, to going boating. Life is dangerous. It is fraught with uncertainty and all of us will die. Do me a favor. One, disconnect from mass media. Quit buying in to the bullshit that spins a narrative that you don't need in your head. You have the ability to parse information in the world without it being filtered through a corporation to tell you how to think. I guarantee it. Do me another favor, number two. Get a piece of paper out and write down what it is you think you're capable of to change the world around you in a meaningful way. It might start out with you saying you're grateful for something that you are not aware of you're grateful for. It might start out with you getting out of bed earlier tomorrow to lose some, some extra poundage going for a walk. It might start out with you being nicer to people around you. And then it might matriculate into you doing something to actually start to affect how laws are passed. Check this out. Challenge three. I want you to look up every elected official on your ballot either of the past ballot or the upcoming ballot. Look up all of your city council people, your mayor, your elected judges. I want you to look up the people at your sheriff, your coroner, the people that work in state government, the people that go to Congress on your behalf. I want you to look all of them up, even in a township capacity, and send them a letter, a well-written letter that is not filled with anger or any kind of rudeness or smugness. And I'd like you to say, sir or madam, I appreciate that you put yourself into the public purview, doing something most citizens are not willing to do. Let them know you're grateful because you're not doing it, I'm not doing it, so I'm thankful somebody is. Let them know that and then tell them, I would appreciate and I expect you to uphold your oath of office. That oath of office, basically that person when they get elected swears an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution, not only of the state that they are elected in, but of our federal government. We the people. See, we have a problem where we forget that the Bill of Rights, we think it's people to people. It's not. The Bill of Rights is protecting you and I from government. It's not protecting you from me. We have tort law and civil law for that, not the, the Bill of Rights. That's not what that's for. You expect them to uphold their oath of office. And you will be paying attention in the future and by the next election cycle. And you will do everything in your power if necessary to see to it that they stay in office if they uphold that oath. Or you will do everything in your power to see that they are removed from office if they do not uphold their oath. That is your job. That is my job. This proliferation of liberty does not happen because we just go cast a ballot. Pay attention, invest energy in getting it done, and don't keep sucking from the teat of mass media in regurgitating things like civil wars coming where they're going to take our guns away. Do something about it. Pay attention, get up, and do your part to protect, promote, and proliferate liberty. Mickey with Carrie Trainer, Drew behind the camera, be well.
tell somebody you love them, and please do not be a dickhead.